Hello guys and welcome to another video. My name is Mark, I'm an entrepreneur and property investor and in today's video we're going to be talking about what separates the 1%, how you can emulate and what I believe are the magic attributes that people need in order to achieve what 99% of people won't. Now this video might trigger some people because I'm going to be very very honest and very very brutal. But I do believe that there are some significant traits that I spot in a lot of people who are successful. And I want to run through those with you. And maybe you'll spot some of them in yourself. And maybe it'll make some people do a bit of thinking, going, is this something I really want? Because let's face it, there are a lot of sacrifices as an entrepreneur in order to go on that journey of growth. So you really need to be committed and you need to know that that's what you want. It's taken me a lot of sacrifice to build up a property portfolio what is about three and a half million pounds today, a business portfolio in the many millions. It's a lot of work and sacrifice. So I want to be honest with you. I want to give you the attributes I think and the things I recognize in myself as well as fellow entrepreneurs and see if any of this rings true you guys. So before we get into the video, please give it a big like, subscribe if you haven't already. We've got our subscriber dividend portfolio, seven and a half grand in there at the moment. We'll be paying the dividends out on the 10th of this month. So I think the next video after this video, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe we'll be paying the dividends out all you need to do is like and comment as always let's get into the video let's talk about what separates the one percent the first thing I want to talk about is a why the reason behind why you want to go on this journey and I think that has to be so strong and in a lot of people including myself I recognize that that was based on insecurity a feeling that I wanted to prove to the world it wasn't even to anyone in particular and it certainly wasn't to myself it was outward looking as well as internal looking, this is me being incredibly honest, a level of insecurity where I wanted to prove to the world that I was worth more or that I was better. And I don't know how else to articulate it because it does sound a little bit egotistical and there's certainly ego in there. But it's more than that. It was based on a desire to compete but on a really large platform and come out and win. And that's how it kind of started. But as I went through my journey, I realized you could win together. So then you start collabing with people and getting together partnerships and you work out that together you can go further faster. But for me, it really started with a level of insecurity. And I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs talk about this, whether it's a parent dying young, whether it's abandonment, whether it's a girl, whatever it might be for them, something happened that made them have a level of insecurity that meant that they had a huge amount of drive to succeed. Now, it's not everybody. It's certainly a lot of people that I've spoken to. The heart back to a level of desire that is based around an insecurity or, or a need to prove. Now, that's not the only reason why, obviously. You can also have a strong desire for a better life, maybe. Maybe you grew up without much and you want to break that cycle and be the person that stands out in your family and is able to provide for the for the people that you love in a way that you maybe weren't provided for before. There's lots and lots of reasons why, but it has to be really strong. It has to be so strong that when there is an option of going out in the evening and partying, you know that you're not going to take that option because there's work to be done. And there are so many sacrifices that I've seen the majority of the 1% make, and I'm not saying everybody, but the majority of the 1% make those big sacrifices in order to become exceptional. Now let's use football as an analogy. Now I'm not a football fan, so but but even I know Ronaldo, Messi, these are some of the greatest players of all time. Now they undoubtedly have natural talent and ability, but I bet if you look at their training regime, if you look at their diet, if you look at their dedication to their craft, I bet that is the bit that separates them from everybody else. The natural ability is there in lots and lots of people. Same in entrepreneurship, the natural ability is there for lots of people. But the bit that separates the people is the dedication, the people that are going to do the extra. And I think it was Tony Robbins said, you know, if you give a good effort, you end up getting poor results. If you give an outstanding effort, you get good results. But ultimately, if you want the exceptional results, that is absolutely reserved for the people that go above and beyond. And often the difference between Good results and exceptional results is tiny. It's that extra couple of hours. It's that extra 
bit in the gym, it's that extra dedication to diet if we relate it back to support. It's all of those things. Genetics come into it, but ultimately, dedication is what separates. So the second thing I want to talk about is vision. It's the ability to live in the future. It's the ability to picture what life can be like and where you can get to if you apply yourself in the right way. So when I was saving up for my first property, I obviously made a lot of sacrifices and the going is slow. It's always slow at the beginning. And in fact, let me assure you, if you're at the beginning of your journey, the further on you get, it still seems incredibly slow. Even though the numbers get bigger, I remember saying, when we do 100,000 pounds in a month, you know, that would be amazing. Then it was 200,000, then it was 300,000. The numbers got bigger and bigger and bigger, and my desires got bigger and bigger and bigger, my dreams and visions got bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's really important that you're able to live in the future whilst doing today what needs to be done. And that is the key, in my opinion, to entrepreneurship, building businesses, anything regarding investing, all those sort of things. It's the ability to do what needs to be done today, but to live in the future and know what's coming. I mean, I can picture what my yacht's like. I can tell you what my villa is like in the south of France. I haven't been there, I haven't seen it, but I can walk you around it and vividly show you what's going to be there. And it's the ability to be able to do that and be happy whilst doing all the actions to take you there that I think separates that 1%. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is unwavering belief, because we're living in the future, We've got this really strong reason why, and then it's the following, isn't it? It's the belief to be able to do the actions to take you to the end destination. And this belief has to come from deep down. It cannot all be built on truths and things that have happened. It's like baking a cake, right? You don't get to taste the cake until the end, but you believe by doing the right things that the cake will taste amazing, by putting the right ingredients in. The farmer who goes out and sows his seed on good ground and he waters it and tends to it every single month, and then it comes around to harvest time, he is likely, more often than not, to have an amazing harvest. Now, does a hurricane come along every so often? Yes, absolutely. And Jim Rohn tells it much better than I will. But more often than not, you will end up with an amazing harvest. So it's the unwavering belief. It's the ability to live in the future, do the things that need to be done today and have that unwavering belief that the end destination will occur if you plant the seeds in the right place. Now, the last thing I've put down on my list is the willingness to do. Lots of people I've met have this great vision. They know they were destined for things. They want to achieve, but they're not willing to do. And doing is important. And I have heard numerous entrepreneurs count the fact that they were willing to do work hard and really get underneath their business and push it forward when others weren't and do what was necessary as the defining factor. I've also heard other entrepreneurs say that I didn't need to work as hard. Now, I would love to wind their businesses back and see what would happen if they didn't. Would they have inspired that member of staff? Would they have brought on that extra client that made the difference? I don't think so. I think the fact that you do what you need to do is the execution part of the journey. It's the result. It's the thing that happens. It's the action that delivers the outcome. I'll give you a great example, okay? So I built a taxi business over the course of five, six, seven years. and We built it quite big and then COVID happened. My hurricane came. My crops were washed away. I had to cut my expenses, I had to give up the lifestyle I had, and I had to go back to the ground roots and build it all again. Now, we were able to achieve in two years what it previously took us 10, but it was no different in terms of intensity, in terms of how hard I worked, how long I worked, and today I recognise where I'm at and I'm going to start changing the activities I've done. But I worked 14 hours a day, seven days a week, for about two years with only Christmas day off, which incidentally I managed to be ill on, in order to build the business back up. And it's not an exaggeration and it's not a hustle porn star story of look at me, I'm so great. It's just the truth. And the people I believe that succeed are the people that are willing to move mountains for their future. Now the people that have already moved the mountain for their future got there and then said, oh, I didn't need to move the mountain quite as much as I did. I'd love to wind it back and see what the outcome would be. I genuinely believe that is a differentiator. So guys, I hope you found this video interesting and informative. Consider what your reason why is. Consider your vision for your future. How does that look? Build a path to it. 
Then have unwavering belief in your outcome and that if you do the right actions, your outcome would be right. Because more often than not, if you sow the crops, you look after them diligently, come harvest time, there will be a harvest. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe as always, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.